This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. The island nation of Mauritius is home to some of the most pristine maritime ecosystems in the world. In July 2020, disaster struck when the Japanese carrier ship Wakashio ran aground on the reef a mile from the coast. Over the following two weeks, NGOs mobilized foreign aid, but then the ship broke in two, spilling an estimated 1,000 tons of fuel oil into the pristine lagoon. So for us, definitely, it will take years to come back. So because the damage here, for us, when we look, when we go to the sea, it's irreversible. There are a lot of fish dead, the crabs are dead. Mais tout ça, c'est une catastrophe écologique inexplicable. On ne peut pas expliquer ça. Join us as we navigate the far-reaching ramifications, environmental, personal, and political. Mauritius is an island nation in the Indian Ocean, about 2,000 kilometers off the coast of the African continent. The country is home to some of the world's rarest plants and animals. Mauritius is surrounded by more than 150 kilometers of white sandy beaches and the lagoons are protected from the open sea by the world's third largest coral reef, which surrounds the island. The coral reef are the main building block of the ecosystem. It's like the house, you know, like uh, the fish go there, there is like a community, you know? So if you don't have the house, so everything will just go, you know, just finish. It's peaceful, you know, it's beautiful. And also there is the fish that stays in corals. We have lots of unique flora and fauna in Mauritius. Dia Jahadja is completing her MPhil PhD at the University of Mauritius. Her research hopes to help identify corals that may have medicinal and other uses. We are well known for our ocean, our uh, mountains, and everything. So if we lose it, we don't have anything. We will just have buildings. Mauritius means home to me, you know. It's a place where you feel safe in all kind of way. You feel safe. Now, right now, I'm doing my uh, MPhil PhD at the University of Mauritius, mainly the Faculty of Agriculture. Point tissue. Okay. I'm working on soft corals, so identification of soft corals around Mauritius. Soft corals are soft, bendable, and often resemble trees. They are integral members of the reef ecosystem and provide habitat for a diversity of other marine species. Some soft corals produce unusual organic compounds, and some of these are important candidates for new drugs. Soft corals need to be studied and preserved if we are to protect them. They are particularly sensitive to the dangers of climate change and environmental shocks like oil spills. Soft corals are known to have uh, medicinal compounds. So if we don't know which soft corals we have around Mauritius, we won't know what they are capable of doing, you know? So that's my main aim. My dad used, used to tell me that when I was only six months old, he put me in the sea, you know? So I used to tell him, Dad, maybe that's why I love the sea so much. At the age of six months, I was already uh, in the sea. 
I chose to study soft corals, one, because I love the ocean. I wanted to do something I love. And also, lots of people don't know the, that soft corals do exist. Everyone knows corals, coral reef, but there is something that is called soft corals. They are not the main uh, reef builders, but they do play a part in the ecosystem, marine ecosystem. Bruno Lorette is a maritime security professional, anti-piracy sea marshal and a combat trainer both with firearms and in the military hand-to-hand -hand combat form called Krav Maga. Aujourd'hui, nous faisons une séance de travail avec les bandes filles aussi. Self-defense pour filles aussi dans la rue, tiers, autour de tout au niveau, même bandes cheveux, tout ça là. Donc, et nous pouvons mettre un peu l'emphase aux bandes d'agression féminines. Je suis aussi formateur en sécurité, bon, en protection rapprochée. Je fais aussi de la sécurité maritime. Mais depuis février, je me mets tout ça de côté et là, mon a new path that activist social. Bruno's social activism started just seven months before the oil spill, and he would turn out a leader in the protests to come. Now it's the combat of the citizens, of the citizens, against everything that is nepotism, everything that is communalism, and everything that is injustice. The goal of the target at long term is that Nous allons faire un, un mauritianisme et un, à une démocratie, démocratie participative, où les Mauritiens peuvent venir s'exprimer librement. Je pense que c'est qui est-ce que je connais avec le sud avant Pramod Kumar Chumun est un spécialiste dans l'impact de la climat change sur les corals and works at EcoSud. EcoSud is an NGO that seeks to protect the environment and biodiversity of Mauritius. They would soon be at the forefront of the cleanup effort, but for now, they continue their regular work of training tour guides in ecologically responsible tourism. Bon, Koura, c'est quoi? Il est divisé, si mon cas dit, en deux parties, correct? Une partie, c'est un training de guide, okay? comme on dit, on a fait marine guide. Là, c'est qu'il nous fait un training général comme un guide pour ce cas, il y a un guide en général au côté terrestre et au côté marin. En vérité, quand tu fais un marine guide, c'est quoi C'est nous donner une technique de guide, un principe de guide, après un peu de knowledge. Bon, parce qu'ils ont bien compris à votre esprit du monde. Ils ont bien compris qu'ils ont azou, ça, à côté de sont aussi. Bon, ils sont un touriste, tout. OK. Question encore Non Correct Vous êtes tout correct Bon, since Past 20 years, EcoSud was created. I mean, in 2000, it was more of an, uh, a group of ecologists uh, that activism, more based on activism. So, and then 10 years ago, they created the Lagoon Bleu program, which is a bit more scientific and proactive with the local community. And there is the social aspects also. We have social projects like training with the uh, people in the community, training on guiding, training, educational training. Most of the two operators here don't have a professional guiding uh, training and there are things that is done while in water that probably doesn't help the coral. It can cause more harm and good. So this part of the training actually brings this kind of awareness and responsibility to, these, to the skippers and to operators so that you try to address all the issues that harm corals.
As night fell on the 25th of July, 2020, no one on the island was prepared for what was about to happen. Life on Mauritius was about to be changed forever. A dark streak in Turquoise waters triggered a state of environmental emergency in Mauritius when a Japanese bulk carrier ran aground on a reef a mile off the Mauritian coastline. At least 1,000 tons of fuel oil spilled into pristine and protected waters, endangering delicate marine life and presenting unprecedented challenges to a country where tourism is a big income earner. When I first heard about the ship, I didn't realize that there would be an oil spill. As soon there was the oil spill, it was... Uh, you know, you start to think about every organism you know in the in this environment. I got some pictures and videos. The waka were just hitting the reef. Immediately, what I did, I just forwarded the video to people in the government that we work with. And there was a period of uh, like two weeks that the ship was there, and there was no oil spill. Everyone was talking about what ha what's happening, how it happened. But uh, everyone was more concerned about what to do now, you know? Mauritians were asking, why was the ship so close to the shore? Why did the crew not respond? And why did their government not act during the two weeks between the crash and the oil spill? There was so much of speculation. We don't know what's really happening. So at that time, it was just like, we just need to go there and see what's happening. So, um, me and my lecturer, we went there and see how, how much damage it goes, how much oil was there. So it was uh, hurtful. It was like, you know, the sound of the waves which you used to hear is different now. I would say it's very different. We started mobilizing with the local community and all the uh, stakeholders, uh, civil society. It's the first time in Mauritius that you see this kind of reaction by the local population, which is quite rare. And every, everybody started to join in trying to remove oil or whatever logistic operation that could be done. And of course, it just got flooded with calls and messages. And we went on site, saw the oil spill. For about one month, it was just a roller coaster. It was so nice to see everyone, every motion, uh, coming together to prepare the booms. Even if they are busy, they have a busy lifestyle, they are there to help out, you know? Every single motion loves the oceans. So seeing it uh, in such a state, it's obvious that they really hurt. Il y a eu l'unité de tous les Mauriciens pour empêcher le spill. Donc quand on regarde un petit peu tout, tous les bouées qui ont été construits en termes de kilomètres, et ça n'arrive pas tous les jours, mais là, pour une fois, les Mauriciens montrent la solidarité. On, on est fiers d'être une nation mauricienne. This is among the few cases that people have mobilized in Mauritius for common cause. And from different backgrounds, people forgot about their differences, and they got together to actually uh, tackle this issue. Many Mauritians blamed the worsening disaster on the government. No answers were forthcoming about the cause of the crash, nor why it took so long to remove the fuel on board. Bruno Lorette began to make his feelings known on social media. This situation could have been avoided if necessary action have been taken by the maritime security, the maritime commandos, or the National Coast Guard. When entering 
a territorial zone without notification, this vessel should have been considered as a threat. It could have been terrorism act, it could have been piracy act. The oil that had spilt was spreading across the coral reefs and the crucial mangrove ecosystem. As time passed, it came to light that the oil was a new type of shipping oil. Some were now claiming that this new oil was not sufficiently tested and may have been to blame for the engine malfunctioning. BP, the manufacturer, denies this claim. Whatever the case, there is growing unease on the island. Many do not trust what they are told by the government and it is clear that the spill threatens ecosystems and livelihoods on Mauritius. Ecosud mobilized partners and resources to help where they could. Ecosud started a crowdfunding initiative to actually carry out work related to the cleaning of the oil spill, rehabilitation of the lagoon. The disaster soon drew the attention of climate activists around the world. This got shared and Greta Thunberg knew about it and she donated 10,000 euros. And we with money from the crowdfunding, EcoSud are tackling the crisis on many fronts, including delivering food parcels to those in need. After the war spill, it was just doing what we can do, you know, uh, trying to coordinate with different entities, donation coming in with cleaning equipment, trying to give that to the local community, communicating with different team leaders, getting volunteers, trying to coordinate actually the different operations, cleaning operations happening within this one or two weeks just after the oil spill. Avec le naufrage de Wakashu, toute la zone de, 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 de sud-est est venue sinistrée. Donc, c'est une zone sinistrée où la vie économique, la vie sociale, la vie familiale bon, et la vie professionnelle a complètement basculé dans cette région. Il n'y a quasiment plus rien, c'est devenu une zone morte. Anger is rising as images and videos of dead or suffering marine animals circulate on social media. Pour ce qu'on a pour la biodiversité qu'il y a dans notre lagon, c'est juste euh, vraiment c'est une catastrophe. On n'a pas de mots pour décrire au fait ce qui se passe en ce moment. Il y a beaucoup de poissons morts, des crabes morts, mais tout ça c'est une catastrophe écologique inexplicable. On ne peut pas expliquer ça. Donc pour nous définitivement, ça va prendre des années à revenir. Donc, parce que les dégâts là, pour nous, quand on regarde, quand on va en mer, c'est irréversible. By this point, over 32 kilometers of Mauritius's coastline is blocked off and is being guarded by police. Angry locals feel that international cleanup crews are favored over locals, even though they know the area better. In addition, the spill came hard on the heels of COVID travel regulations, giving the centrally important tourism sector yet another blow. Resorts and tour operators normally doing brisk trade are left fearful of an uncertain future. On the 29th of August, an estimated 100,000 people, 10% of the population, take to the streets of the capital to express their frustration with the handling and secrecy surrounding the Wakashio oil spill. There was a feeling of anger, a feeling of revolt. 
Parce que ce n'est pas normal que le pays fasse des frais des incompétents qui sont à la tête du pays et qui, 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 qui ont tordé pour donner des instructions et ou prendre, ou, ou prendre des décisions quand il le fallait. Mais définitivement, c'était la révolte. is becoming a uniting force for Mauritians and would increasingly challenge the government over the coming weeks. Le naufrage aurait pu être évité si on avait déjà fait le nécessaire, empêché un, le bateau de rentrer dans la zone. Deuxième chose, ce qu'on aurait pu faire, c'est que ce que j'ai appris, c'est que le bateau est rentré avec 150 000 tonnes d'eau de, comme ballast à vérifier, à pouvoir confirmer. Si on avait enlevé l'eau, ben c'était facile de tirer le bateau sur les rochers. Hein. But we still can't protect it now. We have to do everything just to protect it. Today, Dia is traveling far beyond the restricted area to continue her research. Her work focuses on the impacts of climate change, and this work must go on. While the oil spill has caused devastation on the coral in Maibu, research like this could protect coral from the even larger threats of climate change. On this trip, she is going to collect samples for further analysis. Okay. So basically we go diving with the dive center and uh, at times he tells us where because you know the dive centers know where the corals are so he will guide us where we can have the corals the soft corals and everything. I think it's the most beautiful part of the job, going diving, because it's the most mesmerizing place to be. You forget everything, you forget all your possible problem. It's a huge treat for the eyes, you know? And being able to interact with those uh, uh, organisms is just wow. <laughs> so we will go and collect them. And uh, we cut a piece of it, we don't take the whole colony, we just take a small bit of uh, soft corals and we put it in a zip bag and we just uh, go up. And once in the boat, we just put it in ice. Corals are dependent on algae called zooxanthellae. When they are under stress from high temperatures or other threats like an oil spill, the zooxanthellae abandon their coral hosts in a process called bleaching. Dia's research looks at the symbiosis of soft corals with zooxanthellae and may enable predictions of which corals will survive and exist in the future climate change scenarios similar in impact to the Wakashio disaster. Yes, I'm back. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, I got some. So 
So I just keep these three in the fridge. This one, this one. Yes, I have three you of them. Put it in a zip bag. Yeah, I one, oh the yeah, one. exactly. We were just uh, transferring the corals from the shipwreck we collected to the alcohol. So it's 95% alcohol, so we don't uh, lose any properties of the corals for further processing in the laboratory. So after that, I can uh, just leave it in the freezer for further processing. Then after that, when I'm back in the university for further processing, I do identification of the corals. What we do is that I use uh, a part of the sample which I collected. I uh, look it under the microscope, you know, to be able to identify the different sclerite and everything. Uh, then I have to do a polymerase chain reaction, which amplifies the DNA. Then from this, I have to send it to South Africa for them to sequence it, and then uh, they send it back to us and I have to identify the different subcorals. For now, Dia is unable to continue research on soft corals in the vicinity of the Wakashio. Yet, even if she were allowed to, the damage to the reef is significant. It remains to be seen if it can be fully cleaned. Join us next time as the aftermath of the oil spill ripples out the Mauritian government suspends the parliament in the midst of the emergency, and local media are prevented from attending briefings. Then, Bruno Lorette is arrested in what some claim as governmental pressure. The public again turn out in record numbers under the slogan, A New Mauritius, to demand social justice and compensation for those affected by the disaster. All the while, the cleanup continues, though cleaning the crucial mangrove forest proves much more difficult than expected. It's hard to clean mangroves. I would have been more happy that this oil was on one of our sandy beaches, which is much more easier to manage compared to a mangrove area, which is just a nightmare. The worst place that could have gone was in the mangrove area. We are already reaching this critical point of no return. That was before the oil spill. I mean, we won't be able to return it back as it was before. This is almost impossible. Whatever amount of work or effort we're going to put in, it's not going to bring back what we lost already. Local fishermen too join the effort to clean the oil spill and help save what they can. You see the blue turquoise water, and suddenly it's black. Already in the mine, the job is gone. Then the fisheries give a call. They needed us fishermen to come to help. I say, yes, I'm ready. And we turn from fishermen, we have become like more a professional cleaner in oil spill. I did not have fear. I was sad because this is my mother. Now, now I need to be hopeful. We are preparing to go fishing. That's the aim, to get back to fishing. In July 2020, when a bulk carrier ran aground in Mauritius, local fishermen were among the first to propose solutions, but the government preferred to wait for foreign specialists to arrive. <laughs> In the meantime, the ship split in two, spilling an estimated 1,000 tons of oil into the pristine ecosystem. When foreign experts did arrive, together with local fishermen, they began to clean up the spill. It was difficult, but with brushing and wiping, it was easier. Flushing also was easier, why? Because we have beach around the island, so we have been able to remove all the oil surrounding the islands. Of course, with different tides has keep on coming, so sometimes I've been flushing for five, six times on the same spot, but at different times. 
But anger was mounting with the government's delayed response, and the protests soon grew into a national movement. The past 30 years have seen increasing development and urbanization in Mauritius. But there are still areas that live in the traditional way. Many still make a direct living from the sea. The fishermen, using traditional boats and nets, catch and sell seafood to the local markets. Often the trade is passed down within families. These people were immediately affected by the Wakashio disaster. Fishing has always been in the family. I mean, my four grandfather, all my uncles are fishermen. So I followed the step. So it was natural to me to get used to it. So since I'm, I'm young, I'm saying five, six, I've been in fishing. You see, as, I, as I'm fishing every day, me, night and day, I do see a lot of big, big vessels passing close to the island. I can see they're not so far from me, maybe 20 kilometers from the, from the reef. I do think it's quite dangerous. Some who fish are also boat-building artisans, like Gervais Lamarck. My name is Gervais Lamarck. My profession is après, je fais un bateau tout en même temps, sans marcher de marine. Depuis là, 13 ans, je vais prendre la paix, c'est que mon papa. Premier bateau pour rentrer, je tiens à 16 ans. Je vais finir en bateau là, 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 je dis, mon bateau est fini. Assez, tu prends ton bateau, tu as la peste tout seul, tu as gagné quand tu veux la peste. In the evening of a normal July day in 2020, the Wakashio ran aground on the reef near where Nelvik lives. So the day the Wakashua well, hits the reef, I was having a barbecue in my house, me and my friends, and suddenly we did notice there's something which is not in the right place. I mean, there was a lot of light. I tell my friend, there must be something wrong. But at first I did not know it was a boat. But soon afterward, you know now, we Facebook everything. We get pictures that there's a boat on the reef. So I went high on the house, and when I look at it, when I look at that light, I think this is a monster. The next day, when we look at it, already my friend and I were having bet. This ship is going to wreck. So, so the authority was not letting us go close to have a look, saying that no, everything is in control. It goes on for four days like this. But after four days, when I went back to the sea to pull my cages, already the water was white everywhere. The ship were crushing all the reef over there. We could see this and you could not do anything. These are nurseries for the small fish. It, it was really, really worrying. And when we came back, the government stopped us from fishing. The Wakashu has been able to get the receipt for us. The next matin, the bonheur, the next nous we are going to do the PCR, we are going to get the bateau. The next time we are going to get the bateau, we are going to get the bateau. All the people are going to ask questions, is this bateau capable of doing the work? We say, yes, Marie Basse is going to come, but with Marie Haute, we are going to get the bateau. Tout le monde ne connaît pas, tout le monde vient, tout le monde vient. Et quand on vient, nous pêcher, nous dire, nous dire, nous dire, mais bateau là, quand il était là, et que ce de l'huile qui est là, ce de l'eau qui est là, dans la dent, pour obliger de faire tirer ce bateau là, c'est ça qui casse maintenant, il y a une catastrophe pour, pour d'un côté, 
Maïbou pour dessiner avec l'environnement de l'autre côté aussi. Ça, nous visons ce bateau-là, nous visons un espère, nous visons un exemple qui fait. Oui, nous avons un espère, nous faisons vite. Si tu tiens des bois cachés, comment ils tombent Nous ne disons pas tiens d'un jour. Hein? Dans une semaine, nous disons une semaine, parce que les autres viennent remorquer, viennent remorquer. Mais tu as dit, nous ne sommes pas dans la catastrophe, dans nos lagons, dans nos la côte Maurice. Pas de bruit, ça. At the scene of the oil spill, fishermen are prohibited from going out to fish. Now they sit and wait, uncertain about how long the cleanup will take. The government announced there would be a compensation program, but as news reported at the time, it would only benefit those with fishing licenses. A licensed fisherman is entitled to a bad weather allowance of eight and a half US dollars per day. They also received government subsidies during the COVID-19 lockdown, and now he will receive about 250 US dollars per month while all water activities are banned. Currently, there are about 2,000 licensed artisanal fishermen in Mauritius but many more are unlicensed and thus not entitled to government financial assistance. The government has just issued an indefinite ban on all water-related activities along much of the East Coast. And so the fishermen, the boat skippers, the fishmongers and tour operators, big and small, remain like the empty fishing boats you see behind me, idle and waiting. In January of 2021, the operating company of the Wakashio paid out $500 each to 50 fishermen. The word is out that a Greek company, Polyeco, is looking for local fishermen to help with the cleanup. The fisheries give a call that there's a company called Polyeco is looking for fishermen to help. I say yes, I'm ready. Morning. Calimera. Calimera. Picanes. Good. Good. And we turn from fishermen, we have become like more professional cleaner in oil spill. So I started as a fisherman uh, in charge. With time, that has changed. Now I'm a site manager. At some point, I was up to 73. So with all the fishermen, I was in charge of all of them. With 20 boats, 73 fishermen. If you're working on the island, a great island, it's one big coral island, which is about 27 hectares. For the last two months, it was black with oil. It was a red contaminated. Now I understand the colors. Red was highly contaminated. Green is clean. The cleaning process, having been worked out over time, involves several different stages. Firstly, large debris covered in oil is removed. Then teams use brushing, wiping and flushing with water jets to remove what is left. It was difficult, but with brushing and wiping, it was easier. Flushing also was easier. Why? Because we have beach around the island, so we have been able to remove all the oil surrounding the islands. Of course, with different tides, has keep on coming. So sometimes I've been flushing for five, six times on the same spot, but at different times.
1 to 10. If 10 is the worst, it was 10. Now, if, if you go on that island, I would say between 0 to 1. I won't take that risk to say it's clean 100%. Still, you can see some skin, but there's no oil. As the cleanup continues, so do the protests. The official government communication is that they are working with all stakeholders and experts to come up with an integrated environmental monitoring strategy and emphasize the need to consult widely with foreign experts. But locals are impatient with this approach and feel that the government's response is too slow. Bruno Lorette, maritime security professional turned activist, and others organize an even bigger event, this time on the coast where the spill took place. Ce que je fais maintenant, je mène un autre combat. Mon métier m'a forgé à affronter cette situation. Moi, j'ai grandi à Maurice, il n'y avait pas de barrière de communication, barrière communale et autres. Donc, on voisin, on s'entraidait, on partageait de la nourriture. On était, tout le monde était perçu comme un, un des frères. Nous, on a eu une, une éducation et plus du côté où tout le monde est mauricien. For now, Bruno is leading a growing popular movement. The Wakashio is a catalyst for other grievances against the government. But such a display of disaffection can't go unnoticed by those in power. A few days after this protest, Bruno requested permission to demonstrate in front of the Prime Minister's house. The very next day, he is arrested for issuing a check that had bounced two months prior. This was despite him having already settled the amount. Some in the press reported this is evidence of harassment. Environmental NGO EcoSud is maintaining a close eye on the oil cleanup. And while it has advanced well in certain areas, others, including the mangroves, are proving much more difficult to clean effectively. It's hard to clean mangroves. I would have been more happy that this oil was on one of our sandy beaches, which is much more easier to manage compared to a mangrove area, which is just a nightmare. The worst place that it could have gone was in the mangrove area. So mangroves are a very important ecosystem in uh, the marine and coastal ecosystem. Mangroves are actually the buffer with, between the sea and the land, so they kind of act as buffers and protect your coastline. There's a lot of degradation that happens naturally in the mangroves, a lot of nutrients, so uh, it's very good areas for nurseries, for fish and marine organisms and also it acts as a filter so that the water quality is much better. We are already reaching this critical point of no return. That was before the oil spill. I mean, we won't be able to return it back as it was before. This is almost impossible. Whatever amount of work or effort we're going to put in, it's not going to bring back what we lost already. If these mangrove areas die, we will have an impact on the coral reefs and the water quality, and eventually on the fishery stock in the lagoon.
Ça va arriver en se passant, ça va arriver. 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 Ça va Echo Stud continues to monitor the impact of the spill both on the environment and people. Five months after the spill, they conduct a study and find that one in six are reporting health symptoms from the spill. As the immediate urgency of the spill passes, Pramod and Echo Stud return to the sea to continue their coral farming project. In the current context of global climate change, you'll see that most of the corals are dying. So it kind of brought more enthusiasm on my side to try to understand how we can actually save these species. There's a lot at stake if this, uh, if this environment in Mauritius gets degraded more because so as the tourism industry is based on that, if we lose it, we're going to lose one third of the GDP of Mauritius. They secure metal frames to the seabed to track the growth of corals. We're doing the coral farming project. So the team goes out on the boat. Well, depending on which part of the activity, if we are collecting fragments of corals, so we are either snorkeling, skin diving, or diving with a scuba tank, collecting fragments of the corals. Taking it to our nursery, coral nursery, which is in Lagoon, attaching the corals to metal grids or ski ropes, and then maintaining the nursery, which is removing the algae. Being in water, you kind of forget about the worries that you have, so you're just focused on what you're doing. And working with corals is always intriguing. You always see something special. The acute crisis has passed, and a majority of the visible oil has been cleaned. Now, only time will tell how resilient the ecosystem will be. Meanwhile, people are hopeful that life can return somewhat to normal. Gervais has returned to his boatyard, where he crafts the small fishing boats he has been building since he was 16. Nous cherchons l'eau, nous cherchons qui grandit, dit vous n'avez pas cinq commandes. Même pour nous, si nous vous rendons, pour nous, nous vous rendons un bateau. Allez, nous viens, nous vous rendons un bateau vingt pieds. Nous viens un bateau vingt pieds, nous vous viens seize pieds même. Nous viens seize pieds même là-dedans. Ça vient, nous vous viens seize pieds même là-dedans. Nous viens sur les traves, les tambeaux, la qui, je dis quoi. Les là, nous faisons des morts, nous démarrons un bateau là pour démarrer un bateau, un bateau neuf. J'ai envie de me envie Maurice. Ce qui m'a envie, mon envie, Maurice retourne comment nous y étions. Nous y étions il y a 10-15 ans à l'arrière. Tout le monde, les peuples mauriciens, vivent tranquilles, tout clair, tout honnête, tout bien. Ça, ça nous m'espérait, nous m'espérait. Moi, c'est moi qui suis dit, les vieux pêcheurs, ils font des décorations avec lui, là, les beaucoup là, pour les verser. On est là. On lui a fait un petit chose avec lui. Après, on a un an, ça veut dire que si on dirait nous protéger, nous protéger tout, nous protéger nous la con, nous protéger nous la nous protéger nous la corail, nous protéger nous la mer. Beaucoup de choses nous viennent protéger pour nous faire bien, pour nos enfants et les autres gymnons ici. Tout ce qui est étranger aussi, nous content.
The way of life has changed for many Mauritians, but especially for people like Gervais. The oil spill may have been the worst environmental disaster in the country's history, but long-term environmental degradation from urbanization, development and tourism have had a more pernicious effect. <laughs> At least among Gervais' community, there is still the ability to live simply off the bounty of nature. For how long they'll be able to do so is unclear. <laughs> Echo Sud continues to monitor the response and hopes they are better prepared for the next environmental disaster. I have a mixed feeling about Wakashu. Uh, I am a bit angry because I think we could have done much better as a whole, I mean, as a country, to, to prevent this disaster. I'm also a bit uh, fearful because, as I said, we don't really know the impact of the oil spill on the marine ecosystem. <laughs> I am think a bit hopeful because I think there's a lot of mobilization and that's the part that I think the Wakashu has helped a little bit because a lot of different stakeholders has mobilized together proposing different ideas on rehabilitation, socially how to, to help people in this area, the government taking the commitment to work with all the stakeholders to try to find solution to what's happening to the Wakashu. And also for the local population, because they have become aware of the marine environment, finally the marine environment in Mauritius, and that there's a need to protect this environment. Dia Jahadia's research on soft corals has been published, and she looks forward to increasing the knowledge base that can help understand which species can survive an uncertain future. You know, the main issue is that uh, not just oil spill is, going, is causing all the problem in the lagoon. There is bleaching for so many years. The oil spill has just increased the effect, maybe. But uh, maybe now people will be just more concerned about the lagoon, and but also need to know that uh, they need to take care of the lagoon before the oil spill and after the oil spill. Compared to the first day I've come on the island, I mean a great island, and compared to now, I can see more birds coming, I can see more gecko coming, more lizards coming. I've seen the crabs coming now. I do notice fishes coming around the island now. So life is, is coming back. I did not have fear. If you, if you fear in life, you're gone. I was sad because this is my mother. I was sad for that. Now. Now I need to be hopeful. We are preparing to go fishing. That's the aim, to get back to fishing. This is where we feel free. This is the wish and the hope. Bon, je souhaite que cette situation ne se reproduise plus et que les gens à la tête du pays prennent des décisions qu'il faut quand il le faut, et aussi de, de commencer à mettre les gens compétents à, à la tête et à gérer là où il faut gérer professionnellement pour l'homme. À mon métier qui m'a forgé. Donc je continue le combat, et, mais d'une autre façon. 
Là, non, c'est le combat des, des citoyens, au côté des citoyens, contre uh, tout ce qui est népotisme, tout ce qui est communaliste et tout ce qui est injustice. Everybody is looking for paradise everywhere. The paradise is right here. I know the whole earth is paradise, but Mauritius is really something special. Aside from the damage to the ecosystem, Mauritian society has been damaged by the Wakashio disaster. But Mauritians have pulled together to reduce the impact and to make sure it does not happen again. And if it does, they have worked to be better prepared. Eight months after the Wakashio disaster, a trawler runs aground on a reef on the other side of the island. It is carrying 130 tons of oil. This time, things are different. The multi-party team headed by the Mauritian Ports Authority and PolyEcho work around the clock to ensure that all oil is removed and then they refloat the vessel. When it is clear of the reef, it is towed safely to port. While the largest socio-political issues are far from over, it seems that as far as shipwrecks go, Mauritius has learned some valuable lessons.